What's up guys? Two boxes to open. Let's do the bigger one first. Check it out. It's the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. There are a ton of videos out there on the Mini Lab Mark II. So today I'm really focusing on one thing. How well does it control virtual instruments? And the main ones I'm really excited about are the ones included in Arturia's Analog Lab because there are a bunch of vintage synths in there. What do you think, Kyoto? It's got some keys. It's got some pad knobs, pitch bend and modulation, one USB connector, sustain pedal port jack. Rotary knobs are the thing that's gonna help us control those software instruments. We're gonna connect this up right now and start controlling some instruments because that is why you're here. All right, so we're all set up. I'm gonna load Analog Lab 3, and let us try a preset fascination, which is accessing the Profit 5. Analog 3 always puts the most used knobs and controls right at the bottom there, so you can access them here, but how does it work? Let's give it a try. All right, let's try filter cutoff. Feels good. Resonance. Noise. So one of the things that annoys me about a lot of knobs on controllers is that they are not endless. And by that, I mean that there is an endpoint. On the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, you can keep turning this forever. The cutoff does have an endpoint, but the knob does not. Why is that important? I'll show you. So here's the Jupiter 8. Remember I had turned this knob all the way, not even all the way. I just kept turning it right a lot. And you'll see on this preset, cutoff is kind of in the middle. So is this knob now going to react as if it's in the middle or it's all the way to the right? Let's find out. Do you see what happened? It reacted like it knew already where the software's knob was. So wherever the software's knob is, this knob reacts from that point. This is really important so that when you go to control another software instrument, you're not twisting the knob to find the last point that the software was left. If you've used controllers with knobs before, you know that this is a really annoying problem with a lot of knobs, but this doesn't have that problem. As I'm moving knob nine, it's scrolling up and down the list of presets. If I press it, I'm running encounter pad. And if I wanna change the preset, let's go to the ROM 1A electric piano. One controls the selections up here. So I can filter this list of presets by using number one. So let's go to synths and I want a bass. So there you go. Now I'm showing all bases over here. Now with number nine, I can control which ones I'm looking at. So let's try a bass, bass step in. Controlling brilliance. Sub speed. Wow. This is so much fun with these knobs. This is so cool. I love this. Two thumbs up for the knobs and how well they interact with Analog Lab. So I'm running the full version of Analog Lab. Well, it's actually called the Arturia V Collection, which is all their vintage synths. But the Mini Lab Mark II comes with a smaller version of this, which they call Analog Lab Lite. So it comes with that. It also comes with Ableton Live Lite. 
and it comes with a piano sound. I forgot what it's called. For $129, getting this keyboard with these knobs that are working so well with Analog Lab is actually a really great pairing. If you really like the Arturia virtual instruments, the Arturia controllers are the way to go. All right, so obviously this should work well with Analog Lab, but how does the Mini Lab Mark II work with something else? Now, I had a video about Complete Control. Check out the link up here. I've opened up Complete Control right here. It's not controlling the browser in Complete Control. So now we've loaded Jupyter 8 into Complete Control. If you can tell right down here, the cutoff is actually mapped. Resonance is mapped. Got a um, LFO rate mapped. So that's controlling an Arturia virtual instrument through complete control. So now we're looking at massive. I loaded additive pad, which is a massive preset. but the Mark II is not controlling anything. A complete control keyboard or device could control these with, it, with its knobs, but the Mark II is not doing the same thing. If you wanted to use complete control, you need a Native Instruments keyboard, and to do Analog Lab, you need the Mini Lab Mark II or another Arturia keyboard. Freaking annoying. All right, for the final test, let's see how well the Minilab Mark II can control Ableton Live. Here's the grand piano. Controlling the brightness. Hardness. Glue. Reverb. but the response in Ableton is very slow. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, and nine, 10, 11, 12. Five is controlling the amount of send to the first return. Six is the send B. Seven is controlling the volume of the return. 14 is the volume of the current track. Eight is moving to different tracks. Oh, that's starting to record. the automation. There you go. Ah, very cool. All right, guys, that was my unboxing of the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. If you do love Arturia's vintage synths, this is a great controller for it. It just feels great controlling those vintage synths with these knobs. These knobs are endless, which is awesome, so it's so much easier to switch presets and control them. For $129, this is a really nice mini keyboard. It also works well with Ableton Live. I wish it worked with other plugins. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Don't forget to keep making the music that you love. And I'll see you guys later. I'm gonna play with this some more.